and stretcher of the year. Time. <clears throat> um, have to take that approach. You try to look at it with that perspective of so many games, so many days. You you lose yourself within it. You know you got to win each and every day, even the days we don't have games. In. It ain't many, but you got to you got to approach every day. You know, trying to get better. We'll go next to Chris Solari from. Okay, kind of along those same lines uh, that Kyle asked. Uh, how, how do you, I guess, physically and mentally prepare yourself for this stretch? And how do you, knowing everything that's at stake, stay in the moment with one game and, and not think about the bigger picture? Just due to, you know, how many, you know, good teams we play. You know, you can't overlook anybody and think about the, the, the next day without looking at the day that you, that you already have. And just the teams that we play have coming up, and we, that we have coming up is just, you know, they're not at the bottom of the totem pole. I mean, they're, they're the high ranked teams or, or they're high, highly competitive teams that like to compete and play hard. And you have to absolutely look at it one game at a time. As a follow to that, knowing all of that, do you feel like you guys have your own destiny for the NCAAs in, in your hand at this point? Absolutely. Absolutely. We do. And, and we're going to approach it again well, one day at a time because that's all you can do. And uh, you look at it, you know, with the perspective of so many games, so many days, like, uh, like I said, you lose yourself within that. We'll go next to Sarah Tidwell. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We'll go to Lindsay Huddleston. Sorry about that, Sarah. No problem. Um, hey, Aaron, um, not trying to split hairs, but talk about the idea of the relief of finally winning in Indiana but balancing that with the expectation that you should got you should be winning games anyway. You follow what I'm saying? What do you think about that? Uh, I can I can agree with that. You know, it's something that maybe we should have <clears throat> found ourselves earlier. You know, in the season with and, and just been that competitive, that together, that connected. You know, but things happen for a reason. You know, everything you have to go through something to get something. And um, you know, just I'm, I'm glad we did it at the right time and with the with the games coming up. You know, we have to approach it with that that day at a time mindset, but we know what's at, at stake. Got it. Thank you. We'll go next to Jana Bardo. Hi, Aaron. Now that you've had a couple of days maybe to look back at that Indiana game, what things do you think, what positives are you going to take away from that game moving forward? The connectedness that we had, you know, the the, the positive mindset that everybody took to it and you know, just how, how, how fun it was to win. You know, we, I felt like we haven't felt that as much. You know, it's been sporadic every now and then. But just that feeling that, that Spartans get when we win, it's, it's exciting. And, you know, and hopefully we can build on that, you know, and we can, and we can continue to play at that level. We'll go next to, uh, to Justin Rose. Aaron, kind of on those same lines, that second half was pretty impressive offensively. It looked like you guys were – kind of in a groove that you weren't in since the beginning of this season. Did that give you flashbacks of when you guys were kind of clicking on all cylinders and, and having that moment happen the way that it did, do you think that can carry over and give you the boost? Um, I wouldn't say flashbacks, but just we, we know what we, we can do as a team. You know, whether we go out and do it is a different story, but, you know, I feel like it's been there and just to see it on the court, you know, it was, it was exciting for us to see, exciting to be a part of for sure. And everybody was happy for everybody's success and, Hopefully it turns into to rolling momentum into these next couple of games, but but we have to continue to, you know, play at that level and, and practice at a certain level too to have that. And what about you? You know, when when you score 20 plus points, you know, usually you guys pull out a, a victory. How much do you put this on your shoulders a little bit, along with some of the other veterans on the team to to make sure you guys give it your all here? Uh just it, I mean, you could Say if I if I score twenty plus or we have a better chance of winning, but you know anything to get my team to win is what I try to put my mind to. And if it's that, it's that. If it's something else, then that's what I'm more, that's what I'm focused on throughout the duration of a game, prior to it and after it as well. Just how can I be better? You know, how much film can I watch? How much can I stay in the gym? And just whether it's points, rebounds, assists, or or even you know just diving on the floor for a loose ball, anything little to help this team win. It, it'll be you know me to try to get the job now. We'll go next to Dalton Shatler from the Spartan Media Network. Hey, Aaron, I, I wanted to ask a question here, too, talking a little bit about that last win against Indiana. Uh, we, we saw a lot of success with you at the four uh, during times of that game. I, I'm curious, when you were playing at the four, what did you notice there offensively that, that 
the team was allowed to kind of do. And also what it means about your versatility that you can bring the ball up the floor. You can play at the four, you can play just about anywhere. Um, it's just a, a different spot on the court. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm at that fourth spot. It's a, a trail spot. You know, it's, it's, I'm at the, the, the middle of the court, I like to say, where you could choose a side wherever the point guard doesn't go. You're in that, other, that opposite slot. So it's a lot of room to create for others, a lot of room to, to maneuver and just, and just play basketball. I mean, I feel like I have a good feel for the game and, and take what the defense gives me. And, you know, it's just a, it's a good spot. You know, I played that before in high school. I'm comfortable there. And, Whatever, whatever helps this team win, man. I, I can play the five, the one. You know, I just want to win. It doesn't matter to me. Thanks. We have time for a couple more for Aaron. We'll go first to Audrey Dahlgren. Hey, Aaron. Izzo, I think a couple of weeks ago, was mentioning that there's like there was a banner or something that you guys had on the wall that, you know, the number of days that were left in the season that you could look up at. He always has people that come in and speak to you guys or, or you know, does some type of motivational thing. So with the magnitude of this week, I know it's only Monday, but do you know if he has anything along those lines planned for you or if there's some type of emphasis that he's putting on certain things? Um, yeah, he'll probably, you know, knowing Coach Izzo, he'll, he'll put his, his two cents in for, for a motive, from a motivational standpoint, and we'll definitely listen. But the, the biggest thing we have to focus on is just taking each day one, uh, one day at a time. And we can't l- overlook anything, can't overlook any practice, any film session. We have to prepare like we want to play. And uh, we have to win those, those small areas to win the, the big goal. And, and that's something that we try to focus on every day. And especially with the teams that we have coming up, we have no choice. And then just as a quick follow-up, when you look at Illinois, from your perspective, what is one of the most challenging things about them? They compete. They, they, they compete. They get after. They play hard, man. You can't turn the ball over. They're, they're wonderful. And they play together in transition. And it's, it's, it's fun to see from a fan's perspective. And, but, you know, we just have to be locked in and focused and, and, and match their intensity. All right. Thank you, Aaron. Yes, ma'am. We'll wrap it up with Jack Evelyn. Aaron, uh, with all the things that are going to be asked of you tomorrow, offensively and defensively, scoring 20-plus and checking to Sumu, how important is it for you to avoid that silly foul in the first half, and can you play with that thought in your mind? Uh, let's try to keep my hands up. It's, it seems it's just so so easy to, to just put your hands down and reach it or, or just want to be aggressive on defense, but – you know, I, I try to avoid that and try to be smart and, and aggressive on defense at the same time. It's, it's, that's probably one of the tougher things I try to think about and worry about while being on the court. But, you know, sometimes it gets me and sometimes I try to talk to the ref like, don't don't give me that foul, please. I, I didn't even mean to. <laughs> but it, it happens, man. It is it, just how, how the game goes. But I try to avoid it for sure. All right, Aaron, that's all we have for you. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, guys. I should be back with Coach Izzo shortly.
Hey, Kent. Um, I don't know if this is the red mic. This was on Andy's desk. Um, hold on. I don't have my IFB in. Um, but the microphone, there's no red microphone in the little cabinet filing thing. Um, hold on. Let me put my IFB in. You might be talking to me. No. I'll just make my own. Good, good, good. It More hawks. I'm not making that. I'm literally, I'm literally something that he said in the thing. They were the southern congressmen who wanted the War of 1812. Yeah, I know. I was just joking. I want a full dot com breakdown of the War of 1812. Thanks. Somebody, I'm going to my audio up. <clears throat> what? Nothing, don't worry. It's funny. I had to turn it up. So I don't intrude anymore. Why are they talking about the world? Because they heard you. Yes. <laughs> it's my daughter. She has history class right now. All right, I'll move my. Oh, okay. I'll turn up my audio. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he put it in the six and didn't transfer it over. I bet you that's what it is. Oh. Okay, he just, he's texting me too. <laughs> I thought it said TA, but then, and, I know. So I'm not moving this another. I'll, I'll, I'll move this once we get a confirmation. Because <laughs> I moved it and then I saw right horizontal so I moved it back. Oh, there we go. That's my script. TA stand up is what it's written right there. Okay. Oh, it's going to be okay. Uh, joined by Coach Izzo, or about to be. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. All right. Probably need a stupid little thingy, Majiggy. Uh, remind everyone to mute themselves. I uh, can't hear that as in the background there, but uh, please mute. And uh, we're joined by Coach. Uh, Coach, if you could start with an opening statement, then we'll go through, uh, take questions through the chat. Yeah, I'd like to mute myself. <laughs> so funny, Mex. Um, Did he want something to go in the background of me? <laughs> I'll just text. <laughs> Somebody's going nuts on the uh, thing. You no better comment, be... no comment, no comment. I'm trying to All find right. what that is. All right, so I'm going to start. Uh, you know, first of all, as always, you know, you win a game, you feel better than when you lose a game. And I think after Saturday, uh, you know, the way we won it, how we played. Uh, it wasn't just winning the game. I thought we 
played like we'd hoped to play, uh, you know, two of the best players played really well. Aaron was, I thought, unbelievable. And, and I thought Josh was uh, really every bit as good, just in different ways. Uh, you know, his rebounding, his defense, his leadership, okay. times he played the point. Uh, Aaron uh, was phenomenal with his defense also. But uh, in the summer, he his aggressiveness, I enjoyed the way he played. Um, sorry, some of you guys aren't muted. But uh, he did carry us Saturday as far as that goes, but that's what third and fourth year guys are supposed to do. So uh, I look at it that uh, we're going to need that and more in the next two weeks. As everybody knows, we're going to have six games in 13 days. Uh, it is more than an NBA schedule. The way I look at it right now, at least uh, from the latest, uh, which I don't know who knows who's in the tournament since half the teams haven't played half the games. But if you look at it from what I've seen, all six teams are in. And of course, four are ranked in the top five in the country or six in the country. Um, Illinois is clearly one of the best of those teams in our league and in the country. They lost a couple games early. I think to Baylor, who's really good. They're coming off an impressive win at Minnesota where they won by 30. Uh, they've been on a roll. They've won seven games in a row. Uh, you know, I think them and Michigan have a uh, incredible streak going. Ao and, and Kofi are two of the best players in the league. You're starting to see Ao is getting, a, uh, you know, trying to, to uh, catch the superstar from Iowa. I don't know if that'll happen or not, but at least he's getting, he's among the leaders in scoring and uh, Kofi leads the big 10 in rebounding. They also have very good shooters in Frazier and Miller, so they can beat you a lot of different ways. Um, I think one of the ways is they, they turn you over a lot. And uh, I think against some of those kind of teams, we've been better lately, but uh, we're going to need a, big performance out of our best players. I think if this team's going to really take a step forward, we still need to get more out of Joey. We still need to get more out of Malik. And we're working on that. Um, Foster, again, will not play in this game. Uh, you know, not a lot better uh, as of yesterday, but, uh, you know, keep hoping for later on in the week to get him back. And other than that, we're, uh, we're excited. You know, you got an opportunity. I mean, uh, it's, it's strange because we play so many teams that are ranked. I mean, I've gone a whole season playing two ranked teams in the, in the Big Ten. Now we're going to play four in a week and a half. But I, uh, I think the other strange thing is we're playing some teams for the first time. Illinois for the first time this late. Maryland for the first time this late. You know, Michigan for the first time this late. And so it's going to be a hellacious couple, couple of days uh, with, uh, you know, prep today, game tomorrow, prep on Wednesday, game Thursday, prep Friday, travel Saturday, play Sunday, and then the same routine. But it's also an incredible opportunity. And so uh, we're going to look at it as the, the second one, that it's an incredible opportunity and see what we can do with it. We'll go first to Chris Tavari. Tom, with that, how do you keep these guys focused maybe on the small picture versus the big picture with that? And do you treat this at this point like one and done time in some ways? No, uh, that wouldn't happen here. It'd, it'd be like I, I should stand up here like uh, what's the name dead playoffs, you know, like are you crazy? Um, there is no way that anybody will understand. There will not be any pressure put on these guys. They've had enough pressure put on them all year. It's going to be the Illinois game. I have in my mind, I talked to them two weeks ago about what I think has to happen to have a chance to get in. But as I say that, who knows what's going to happen? Who's going to get COVID? Who's going to play games? I see some teams they're putting in because they win a game. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody knows what's going to happen. So I'm sure as hell not worried about that right now. And I think that would be unfair because we have no clue. You know, it's not 18 games or 19 games like it was some year. It's not, you know, 20 games like it was back eight years ago. You know, if you got to then, you'd be in. Um, all I know is we got a lot of work to do. We won a game. Um, 
we have uh, great opportunities. And to be honest with you, Chris, that's what I'm focusing everything on because these guys have been through so much this year that, uh, you know, we talked about situations. We talked about don't worry about streaks and this and that. Um, it's not that kind of a season that you can do that. And so what I'm talking about is Illinois, Illinois, Illinois opportunity to win a game. If we win a game, we'll constantly reassess where we are. We'll go next to Lindsey Huddleston. Hey, Tom. Um, kind of dealing with the broader question that we've been having over time about coaching this generation of athletes. How do you come off a win in Indiana that you want to celebrate but also keeping expectations that, hey, this is what we are supposed to do. How do you kind of emphasize, emphasize that to your team right now, but just in general with uh, this next generation of athletes? Yeah, it's, uh, as you know, uh, there's so much of what did you do for me today in this generation? And it's, it's a very good question that I don't really have a great answer for during this COVID time, because I think, you know, we haven't learned how to deal with it yet. But what I'm dealing with is we won a game. Here at Michigan State, you're supposed to win games. Um, let's learn from why we won the game. Were we more connected? Did we move the ball better? Did we play a little better defense? Did Indiana play worse? Let's, let's look at why we won the game. And when we did that, we found a lot of positive things we did. But uh, making shots was one of them. You know, Gabe hits four. Uh, Aaron makes shots. Um, so when you make shots, a lot of good things happen. But I, I am not, uh, I did not come back. We did not celebrate because uh, there's nothing to celebrate. But we did, we just talked to them. You know, they, like I said, they've been through a lot. I understand that. And my approach has been completely different than a lot of years. And um, I still say that when you go through it during the season, like we did, and never know how certain guys are coming back. Uh, I mentioned it that I watched North Carolina and Louisville to my staff and Louisville, I think was the best defensive team in that league. And they gave up 99 points, you know, uh, after a week of co uh, coming off COVID. And that's, that's the parts, Lindsay, that I, I don't know if anybody knows because it's different for each kid. So I'm just still trying to focus on let's get better as a team. Yeah, we're changing the lineup. Yeah, we're still looking to get better. You know what? That's the way it is. It's it's just the way it is. I, I, I can't apologize for it, nor can I condemn it for it. It's the reality of what we're going through. And, uh, and you know, what I said to you last week and a week before was so true. We practice good. We practice like a team that has given up on themselves. That's encouraging. I could use that statement when I got back to the locker room. You played like you practiced none more so than Rocket Watts. He had two of the best practices he's had since he's been here. And uh, I mean, really good uh, the, the, the two days before it was, you know, it prompted uh, everybody to say, wow. And uh, so that's encouraging and we're just gonna try to build on it. We'll go next to Justin Rose. I'm trying not to be repetitive here with this, but 56 points in the second half, you know, and when you guys lost that game to Purdue, they seemed to go on a run after kind of that victory. Do you see this team maybe looking at that second half in particular, knowing that what they're capable of doing offensively and hope that maybe this springboards you guys into the next two weeks, which obviously are pretty important? Yeah, I mean, you hope so. I mean, uh, making shots, though, uh, you know, effort-related things is different than making shots. I mean, there's not a, there's not a player I coached in my 26 years that ever – wanted to miss a shot. There's guys that make a choice on whether they go a little harder or not. There's guys that make a choice whether they bend a little better, rebound a little better. Those things are choices. Making shots is not a choice. Now, in making shots, I think it lifts all the other things. And that's what's uh, encouraging. But I still think, you know, we got some guys, I think Rocky, you know, has been shooting better in practice. I think Joey Hauser still, uh, you know, along with Malik Hall, those two guys, I think, can score more and make more shots. So the encouraging part is at least the ball movement led to better shots. It got Gabe some great shots. And, you know, Gabe was out for those, you know, almost a month. I mean, the 17 days, and then he came back, and he struggled for a while. 
So getting him back, you know, if you had him at Iowa down there, would you, could you have won a game? I mean, all those things are, you just think and dream about. So I'm not worried about anything else than, uh, you know, just continue to, to figure out why we made more shots. And I think some of that was practice, but I think some of that was the ball movement and the fact that, uh, you know, guys are kind of figuring out some things. Aaron is starting to really get in the paint, get two foot stops. Uh, Josh made some great passes. Uh, it was the passing that, you know, and some guys didn't get assists like rocket made. We call them hockey assists here. You know, they do that in hockey where you get an assist for the assist. Basketball, it's got to be the direct one. Rocket made some great assists to the assist that led to the basket. And that's sharing the ball. And that's kind of figuring out, understanding the game a little better. And I thought we got some of that. For many years, you guys have been the hunted. Now you are apparently taking on the hunter role for the last two weeks. Will you use that? Will you use that tactical advantage? I don't know. You know, I forgot what it's like to be the hunter role. You know, we've been pretty fortunate here over the years. We've been hunted more than we've been hunting. But, uh, you know, I've been an underdog all my life. Let me tell you, uh, those last couple of weeks, the way everything went, I felt like an underdog, way underdog, you know. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to use any tactics other than, guys, we're capable of playing better than we have. We've had some things that have muddied things up. I said I had to do a better job on some things. Don't worry about any of those things. Let's try to max out on how we play in the effort related things and on the intelligent related things. And then that ball is going to go in the basket. And if it does, you're going to feel better about yourselves. Your defense will get better. And that's where you go. And uh, 56 points in the second half against a pretty good defensive team that had won four to six. You know, something to build on is not something to have a party over. We'll go next to Audrey Dahlgren. Hey, Tom, you mentioned the two ways that you could approach this week as an incredible opp opportunity versus the daunting task that lies ahead. And so as you do, how do you preface that, though, I guess, throughout the week to the players to look at it as, hey, this is an exciting time or this should be an exciting approach to facing these teams that you're about to play? I think the beauty of it is... Uh, you know, we've played hellacious schedules over 20 years and guys came here knowing you're going to play good teams. Believe it or not, there's been more than a couple years that we played more rated teams in the non-conference than we did in the conference in some of those years. But they always know, you know, George Perlis used to say they all count one and they do. And that's coach speak. But you're playing a top five team or top four or three team. Um, human element comes in and everybody knows it's more important to you as fans and media players do. Uh, so I don't try to downplay that. I, I just try to say we're taking it one game at a time. And, and that is coach speak, but that is what everybody should do. You can't look ahead right now. Hell, I don't even know if we'll finish the season. You know, somebody else might get the COVID uh, situation and, and cancel a couple more games. I mean, it's happening all over the country right now. So I said, as of today, we're playing Illinois tomorrow. Let's just worry about that game. And if we play better in that game, um, win or lose, we still have a chance to obtain some things. If we can win a game like that, um, you know, those are the shot in the arm games that really, really, really make a difference. And then as a quick follow-up, obviously you need Aaron in different areas, but what do you like about him sometimes when he is able to run the point? I mean, what does that bring to your offense? I know you have other guys that obviously need to play there and he has his own role, but what does he provide in that sense? Well, I didn't play him at the point very much. What I did is I put him in point guard situations and ball screens and that. When you play a, a player at the point, um, it is draining to play the point guard position. That's why 90% of the team's point guards aren't your leading scorers. Take Ao, for example. He was playing the point his first two years. Now he's kind of off guard and just gives him more freedom to do more things. He still has the ability and still does get into a lot of ball screens and things like that. I, I thought Aaron just played within himself. Uh, one thing we've been really working on is come to a two-foot jump stop. 
quit turning the ball over, taking bad shots. He did that numerous times. And, and I said, well, it's taken two and three quarters years, Aaron, but the light bulb went on in that area, you know, and, and, you know, players have to learn. There's a process to everybody. Everybody forgets. I, I kept thinking AO and uh, Kofi were, were sophomores, but they're juniors too, you know, and there's a process to getting there. And those guys have done a great job. Uh, Garza's a senior, you know, we're just so embedded on everybody should be this way so early. And especially when you go through a year like this, that, uh, you know, I think it's still holding serve that the most experienced teams are the ones winning and uh, that have the most juniors and seniors. And, and so I think uh, putting Aaron in that role uh, where he making decisions, he's making better decision too, Audrey. He's making, uh, he threw a couple of great pass to the corner, got Josh an open shot, got Gabe an open shot, drove it, kicked it out. Uh, he's just playing more within himself. And I think um, that's the comfort level he's starting to feel. Thank you. We'll go next to Kyle Austin. Kyle? Earth to Kyle. Come in, Kyle. Oh, looks like Kyle froze, so we'll jump ahead to Brendan Quinn. Um, I guess within the last week or so, um, you, know, you had Garza, you had Travion Williams, you had Trace the other day, and, and now coming up you got – you get Kofi. Um, and I wonder how you're feeling about not only your interior defense, but also the rest of your defense ability to, you know, if you want to double and recover all these things that you're going to have to do, not only this game, but even what else you have coming up. Well, just so that all you can understand how difficult it is sometimes, um, you know, Garza at Iowa, I don't know, I think had 30, 40 points. He might've set a North American record there. Um, and, uh, we had a shot to tie it with 20 seconds left and Garza at our place had eight points and, uh, we were out of the game 20 seconds into it. So, um, you know, sometimes you pick your poisons on what you want to do. If you're not real sound everywhere, we do think we have a couple of things we're going to try. We got to do a better job, but even like Indiana, you know, at, at the end of the day, a two is worth two points, even in Philadelphia and the UP, and a three is worth three points. And, you know, uh, sometimes you give up um, a two for a three, and sometimes you don't, you know, it just depends what that team does. But there are different reasons we do different things. And, you know, one thing I've been very disappointed with our posts is we're letting people get the ball way too deep. And some of it is strength. Some of it is experience. Some of it is, I don't think you've ever had a year that you've been covering, that I've been covering. Uh, I don't know who's the oldest on this thing. Uh, Fred Human or whoever, that's insulting, so take it. But I don't think we've ever had this many good big guys in this league ever. And so it is a new phenomenon that we, you know, we're all dealing with a little bit and, uh, you know, when we, when we say that about Garza or we say that about Travion, you know, they're getting the same amount of points against everybody else too. And so we've got to do a better job. There's no question. We got to pick our poison. I'm not going to give that up on what it's going to be. I'm just going to tell you, we're going to try to do a better job than we've done in a couple of those games. But as everybody said, you know, we did such a good job against Garza here and uh, you know, did that matter? I mean, uh, we got to do a good job all the way around. And, and one other area we got to do a good job on is scoring on the other end, not turning it over. Gotcha. Well, next, Thank Kyle you. Austin, who's back with us. I am back. Thanks, Max. Um, Tom, obviously, the, the kind of different sort of lineup seemed to unlock things offensively for you a little bit uh, with Aaron at the four, a little bit more. I, how much of that were just, you know, Illinois or Indiana's personnel allowing you to do that? And how much do you think you can get into that lineup? Uh, the rest of the season uh, you know again you have some success at one thing it doesn't mean it could be the team you're playing it could be the lineup um, you know it's something we talked about exploring uh, we couldn't explore it with Gabe and COVID so you know that would took care of that month and uh, you know I mean we'll look at that some uh, you know 
my ultimate goal is still to get, you know, Joey and Malik on track. If that happens, uh, we're going to be a better basketball team because once you do that and go small, now you just limit, uh, you know, your number of substitutions, number one, and, and number two, in case you get in foul trouble. But we got to figure out how to play the best we can play. So whatever lineup that is, sometimes it'll be dictated by your opposition, but sometimes you can dictate to them what you want to do too. So uh, it's definitely in our package. I'll say that. Time for a couple more questions. We'll go first to Chris Solari. Kind of what, <clears throat> along with what Kyle said, you know, with how much that Illinois pushes up on you defensively, that, that three guard situation where you have Josh and Aaron and, and Rocket all in there together to bring up the ball. Is that something that can maybe minimize some of those turnovers or at least get you some, some alleviate some of that pressure? You know, they put a lot of pressure on, but so does Indiana. So does Purdue. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I'm not, you know, I say this, I'm not as worried about the pressure, but they do go with a four guard lineup a lot, but they got a horse inside, man, that, uh, you know, he might outweigh two of our guys, you know, I mean, he is big and strong and, and playing a lot better than he did last year, if you ask me, but uh, yeah, you know, anytime you can get more ball handlers on the court, it, it definitely helps you. And, uh, and that, that definitely could be in a package rocket might, might have played one of his better games last week, as far as all around, but last year against them down there, he might've played his best game of his career here. So We'll see what that brings, but uh, I have been pleased with his progress too and uh, and played a lot of it on the point, but I did put Aaron there a couple of plays. I put Josh there a little bit, take some pressure off everybody and <clears throat> get Rocket in a place where he could come off some ball screens and he did a very good job of that. So we'll move it around a little bit. It's a shame we're doing it this time of year, but as I said, you know, I, I can't apologize for something that I couldn't control in the middle of January. And that, that left some, you know, that and no, no Christmas left us to a point where we couldn't do the things we normally do at those periods of time. We'll go next to Fred Human and wrap it up with Jack Gavoy. Fred, unmute yourself. I am sleeping. unmuted, aren't I? Aren't I unmuted? There you are, there you are. I want to correct your facts because I think Jack has me by a few years, just so you know. And so I didn't clear. know Jack was on. Yeah, well, he's on. <laughs> huh. My question to you, um, you got fired up when one of the astute reporters here after the game Saturday talked about your team's body language, particularly Aaron Henry and really the whole team. But you don't coach that, right? I mean, not everyone is Draymond Green. C can you teach a team swagger or, or do you just expect it? You know, that is a million dollar question because I do have a few guys that I talk to them. I talk to their parents. Um, I heard a great thing. Um, I was watching a Barry Gordy um, documentary and, and a woman in there talked about one of the most important things. And this is back in the sixties was body language. And, you know, you get a lot of parents, you get a lot of players, you get a lot of people that want to change everything in their life to be better, whether it be your skill level, your intelligence, your weight, your, you know, height, you can't really change, but a lot of things people want to change. But if you tell them that their personality has to change, they look at you like you're on dial clue And yet, you know, I've gone to doctors so they're supposedly the most intelligent people on the, on the planet. And you can talk to one doctor who's just very outgoing and vibrant. And you can talk to another doctor who seems all doom and gloom. Hell, I don't care what disease I got. I X that guy off my list. I don't want to go see him. And, and I, I really believe that. I, I think that uh, body language and uh, things like that, are, are very important in the success of a team of, and of an individual player. And probably nowadays when everybody spends all their time like this and doesn't communicate with anybody, body language is, is more important and less, 
and less available. Um, you know, people, uh, nobody ever tells anybody about their body language because they don't see anybody. They just text and tweet and email and all the other crap that goes on out there. And I think it is hurting kids. I really do. I, I think um, when you have an effervescent uh, leader, you know, and uh, like Josh is getting to be that way more and more and more. That wasn't his personality. And I think if he wouldn't have been injured, he would have probably started doing that earlier. But if there's one thing that I would search for in recruiting, it would be that. And, uh, and I don't care if you're the center, but you're the walk on. I mean, I'm on my kid every day. I tell him every day, his body language is okay, but his, his personality has got to change. So I do the same to my own kid. And I would do that to every person I came involved with. I, I, I think um, if I got 10 of you guys that interview me and one does it with a little passion, man, I'm giving that person a lot more than I'm giving the drab human being that's just sitting there doing nothing. And, and uh, it's, it's amazing to me. And I've done this over the years too. I've actually videotaped with one of those small cameras I videotape a player or the bench or just to try to show him because the hardest thing in the world to do in the Tom Izzo uh, thought process is self-evaluate. People don't see that in themselves, that they don't have that. And uh, so I've, I've done that. It worked a little bit. Now, I, I don't know, you, you might get sued for it now. So I don't, I don't want to do that. I'll just try to talk to him about it and, but I do spend a lot of time talking to guys about it. And, uh, and uh, you know, I mean, my favorite is my Aaron Henry, you know, since everybody always rips me about it. But the finger wag was because he walked out the court like this. Didn't look anybody in the eye, you know. That, that's, that's what it's all about. And uh, that'll probably never change in my uh, lifetime because I'm, I'm not I, – I believe in it so strongly that uh, – uh, if you would have asked my team who talked in the huddles and who was different, I would have said it would have been Aaron and Josh and, you know, guys, you know, and people got to learn how to do that. But there's a process to that too, because they ain't learning it back in school now because teachers ain't teaching like I was taught. So it's different and they've got it. That's part of the process. We'll wrap it up Good with question Jack for a Campbell. long answer, Fred. Sorry about that, but uh, <laughs> you hit a, a sharp note, so that'll leave me with the old man on the staff, which is Jack. So go ahead, Jack. <laughs> uh, Tom, I'm definitely older. Fred just looks older, but uh, there's an advantage for age when you're waiting for the vaccine, so it's all good. Uh, your teams historically have had a reputation for toughness and enjoying a physical brand of basketball. How important is it? especially a game like tomorrow with the officiating and what they choose to do as far as allowing a guy like Kofi to camp in the lane or bull his way to the basket. And if you get a, maybe a cheap foul on the perimeter with Aaron, how much does that change the game? Jack, I've known you for 36 years and you're trying to get me a $10,000 fine. <laughs> the hell are you doing to me? I, um, First of all, the one thing that is most disappointing to me is we're not that physical team we used to be. And part of that is a lot of it is my fault, uh, either in recruiting, off season, strength and conditioning, what we couldn't do, but it's, it really does fall on my lap. But, um, I, you know, I haven't been pleased with the fact that I think there's been a lot of camping out in the lane and you must've saw it on TV because it's not something you and I talked about. But uh, when you're that big of bodies, it'll be interesting to see. Um, there's a lot of things interesting. I mean, I know all those officials on a first name basis, of course, because as you've watched the games this year, because of the COVID and the way that we had to do it in the Big Ten, I mean, I think we've had the same guys, you know, 20 out of 25 games. And that's not all bad, but... Uh, except for the guy that didn't call a charge on the charge I took on the bench. I, I, I like most of those guys and they'll call it like they see it. We're just gonna have to figure out ways to do it because uh, 
there's still no excuse for getting posted up inside the paint. Uh, and we got to do a better job, both from a, a, a coaching standpoint and coming up with different ways of coverages or from a player standpoint, or maybe more importantly, both. So we'll try to do it, but you're not going to see a bigger human being since maybe uh, I scouted Georgia Tech and LSU and saw Shaq my first time back in 90 uh, with Steve Smith. But um, Kofi is, uh, he's a man child and he's improved a lot from last year. He's the biggest, strongest, uh, you know, player that's been in this league in a long time. But, you know, there's other teams that have had big players. That doesn't mean they're, they're great. But I think this team that we're playing uh, with AO and him, they've got an inside and an outside. They've got some shooters around them. Brad is a very, very good coach. You talk about a guy that coaches toughness and that. Um, he, uh, he gets after it. And I, uh, I appreciate that. And I've grown to kind of respect that a lot. So uh, we know we have our hands full uh, in our minds. Who's the best? There's three or four teams in our league that all bring something a little different. They're all really good. They're all really worthy of potential one seeds. Illinois doesn't have to take a back seat to anybody. And uh, we have an opportunity ahead of us. It's an opportunity of a lifetime, really, because they all count one. But some of these games, I think in the eyes of people that matter, you know, they're bigger games than just one. And that's the way we're trying to approach it. That's everything we have, Coach. We appreciate you taking the time. Anytime, guys. Look forward to talking to you soon.